The ongoing wave of sexual harassment scandals claimed another high-profile target this week. Minnesota Senator Al Franken announced his resignation after several women accused him of inappropriate conduct. But as Franken himself noted in a Senate floor speech, other accused men, including Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore and President Trump himself, have yet to face consequences from the accusations against them. To talk about this, we are joined by New York Times op-ed columnist Michelle Goldberg, whose most recent column covered the topic. Michelle, welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. So one of the things you raise in your columns is this idea that principle may be becoming partisan. What does that mean? Well, I think that there are vastly different incentives in the two parties. I mean, the Democratic Party, although they're certainly driven by cynical partisan motives like anybody else, they also have a base that is largely female, that largely aspires to a world without pervasive sexual harassment. And, you know, they promote ideas of gender equality, which made having even someone accused of the sort of transgressions that Al Franken is accused of, which pale beside what Roy Moore or Donald Trump has been accused of, it made his future in the party untenable. Whereas Republicans largely, not exclusively, but largely don't care. And so there is really no pressure to have consequences for some of the kind of rapid abuse, the the, the rampant abuse in their yeah, rights. Yeah, well, you, but you did have Trent Franks. Right. You, well, Trent Franks is a little bit different, right? Because Trent Franks is actually doesn't quite fall under the rubric of Me Too. I actually don't think that there are a lot of women out there who can say that their bosses press them to carry their children as right. surrogates, right? I mean, this is this sort of, like, monstrous, freakish aberration yeah. that, if anything, just reifies the idea that the Republican Party is the party of the handmaid's tale. If you, you say in your column that if this is a cultural revolution, revolution is smaller than it appears. Yes, because it only, because it's a revolution that really depends on people's susceptibility to shame. So it's only really taking place in realms like the Democratic Party, the media, Hollywood, the right. arts, where, where publicity and public censure can have an impact, right? right? So it's why... Donald Trump has been so far completely immune to its effects. Right. And as you pointed, it hasn't yet rocked corporate America, Wall Street. Right. I don't think anybody out there believes that Wall Street is less rife with harassment than, you know, the news media or public radio. It's simply the incentive structure for people coming forward is a lot different. But let's also be clear that while the Democrats are sort of positioning this as the sort of right moral choice for Franken to resign, it is also the politically the most expeditious path to choose, right? This Democrats will use Roy Moore and Al Franken as comparison tests in 2018, will they not? Right, but I think that that's the point. I mean, for the so the point is not that the Democratic Party is, you know, operate, operating out of pure unblemished principle. Right. It's that the incentives for the Democratic Party um, push for decency on this issue. And I think the incentives in the Republican Party push for apologizing for the most grotesque kinds of sexual Or abuse. at least tolerate. Apologizing or at least den or denying. Is, is there a point, Michelle, that, that um, you know, as more and more of these figures fall from grace, is there a point that we get desensitized to this? Uh, my fear is yes, and more than desensitized, that the backlash comes, where people decide that mm -hmm. this is just how men in the workplace are. Yeah. And so I think that we have to be really careful and vigilant. And most women I know um, don't feel triumphant at this moment. Most, a lot of women I know are extremely apprehensive and, you know, yeah, think that the backlash is going to gather force. Well, to, to that end, you talk in one of your columns about something called a sex panic. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for people unfamiliar with the term? Well, it's basically when you have these sorts of um, moral outrages and... A, you know, lack of due process. I mean, maybe the most salient example would be the daycare satanic sexual abuse panic of, I believe, the 80s, maybe the 90s, when you had all these wild accusations, but people actually going to jail for ideas about, um, you know, children in daycare being abused by these satanic cults. And it was really, I think, something that was born of a lot of anxiety about daycare as an institution and working women. I don't think that's where we are, but I do think that America is vulnerable to sex panics and is sort of vulnerable to these moral crusades mm. um, where, where people end up getting steamrolled. Well, that's an ongoing development. Michelle Goldberg, thank you thank for your you. time.